I've showed you the 59 and the 58 standard ratio from the custom shop. Now I'm about to mess with this 57 gold top. We are gonna swap the plastics. And just like that, in a matter of seconds, the black plastics are on. I think I prefer these. <laughs> Two thousand fourteen was a long time ago, but luckily I have a way to check the official listing back then. Here it is, nineteen fifty seven Les Paul Gold Top reissue. Back then it was priced at four thousand six hundred ninety nine. This is the listing for the 2013 model, but they are the same for 2014. The 57 reissue was available in a couple of colors, Antique Gold VOS, which I am demonstrating for you today, Antique Gold Dark Black VOS and a lefty version. I am glad a friend of mine provided this listing for me because there is some interesting information in here. I am gonna leave it on screen for a couple of seconds, don't read too much into it because I am gonna read it to you right now while I demonstrate how the gold top looks with the swapped plastic versus the original. The 2013 and 14 models were interesting for a couple of reasons. For 2013 the gold top features a host of new details to make it the most accurate recreation of the 57 gold top ever created by Gibson. In addition to its foundation of a solid lightweight mahogany body with carved maple top and a glued in quarter sewn mahogany neck with long neck tenon joint, the 57 Les Paul Gold Top reissue benefits from Gibson Customs 20 anniversary specifications newly adopted for 2013. These include a one-piece rosewood fingerboard, Cluson Deluxe machine heads, hot hide neck glue, a historic truss rod assembly with no tubing, accurate body and fingerboard binding color, new custom booker created in the image of the original PAFs, and the period correct gold top and mahogany back neck finish colors. Staying true to form, the 2013 models also include the 50s neck profile which is chunky and substantial, rounded off. And here's some interesting information about the custom buckers which were apparently new back in 2013 and 14. At the direction of legendary Gibson president Ted McCarthy, Gibson engineer Seth Lover began working on a pickup with hum cancelling capabilities sometime in 1954. Applying for a US design patent, hence the name Patent Applied for or PAF on June 22nd, 1955. By early 1957, the standard double coil version of the humbucker pickup had begun to appear on Gibson ES-175, ES-350T and eventually on the Les Paul model gold tops of the same year. Gibson Customs new custom bucker accurately recreates the original PAFs of the late 50s using Aonico tree magnets and unequal turns of 52 AWG wire in each coil for that characteristic PAF bite. To top it all off, the 1957 Les Paul Gold Top reissue plays superbly right out of its custom shop hard shell case thanks to a trip through one of Gibson's state of the art plaque machines before it leaves the custom shop floor. To sum it all up, the 2013 and 14 historic specifications include the one piece rosewood fingerboards, hot hide glue neck fit, Custom buckers, Cluson Deluxe machine heads, historic truss rod assembly without the tubing, accurate body and fingerboard binding color. Later on Gibson introduced the standard and true historic specs. Now we are about to change the plastics. The pickup rings, pick guard and the poker chip are from the website Crazy Parts. They have a lot of different uh, grade of parts, you have the historic stuff uh, like the aged stuff. There was a bit of a mismatch between the original cream pick guard and the black one but we filed it down and it worked. Here are the specs for the 2013 model, there are no 2014 model specs in the official Gibson website meaning that they are the same as 2013. Some people in the forums claim that the glue was changed for 2014 but I cannot be sure of that so we'll go with the official 2013 specs, carved maple top and Franklin tight bond glue for it. Then there's the neck which is made of one piece mahogany, it has a long neck tenon and it is glued a set neck construction using hot hide glue. The fingerboard is made out of one piece rosewood, people speculate that the glue is also hide glue for the fingerboard, I am not entirely sure, we will call it tight bond for now. The nut is made out of nylon, 
for the slots it says Gibson Plex system. I'm gonna link a video above explaining what the Gibson Plex system is. We got the Holy Headstock veneer, Cluson Deluxe tuners, the bridge is ABR1 nickel and the ultra lightweight aluminum tailpiece. The hardware, we left the gold tops but swapped some of the plastics so it's no longer relevant. For the electronics, we have the custom bunker pickups which are new for 2013-14 models. The electronics are listed here, the finish is nitrocellulose lacquered antique gold VOS. It has the custom shop hard shell case and the certificate of authenticity. Let's go through the specs again, a single piece mahogany back, a carved maple top, antique gold VOS finish with a nitro lacquer. Mahogany neck with a set neck construction, long neck tenon with hide glue, one piece rosewood fingerboard, 22 frets, cellulose trapezoid inlays, 12 inch radius, 24.75 inch scale length, a nylon nut with a slot made with the Plex system, and we have the holy headstock veneer, the Les Paul model silk screen, mother of pearl Gibson logo, Cluson Deluxe tuners. For the pickups we have a set of custom buckers replicating the original PAFs. Before I move on with the review I'm gonna clean the fingerboard and polish these frets. However I'm not gonna attempt to shine the pickup covers. The bridge and tailpiece are intentionally aged, you can see the ABR bridge on the bottom is rusted. First I polished the frets with frying. Then I used Dunlop 01 to clean the fingerboard and the excess frying on the frets. After it was clean and dry, I have applied the fingerboard oil F1 by Music Nomad. I'm gonna wait for a couple of minutes for the oil to get deep into the wood. Here's what's under the neck custom bucker, a long neck tenon as promised in the specs. Nothing but the best for a 57 ratio. And the pickup itself, you can see the patent apply for sticker or PAF. These are replicas of the original PAFs, the custom bucker. They have the Gavit conductor wire. Alnico 3 magnets and the cap for them, the nickel cap is VOS aged. Here's what's under the bridge pickup, the routing for the cables and a massive maple top. Here's a better look at that custom bucker in the bridge position, also aged nickel cap. The pickup rings were initially flat but these are supposed to be from a soft plastic that takes the shape of the top once you screw them down. They are slanted and now they are curved, the bridge one is pretty high actually. We kept the original screws because they are part of the VOS specs, they are aged, some rust on them. Then we got bridge volume, neck volume, bridge tone, neck tone, the original gold top hats that go pretty well with the finish, original dial pointers. The custom bucker in the bridge position is at 790k ohms, switching over to the neck at 781, both pickups in the middle position, 392. The 57 gold top has the ABR1 bridge with the individual saddles marked ABR1 Gibson in the bottom and this one has been aged, you see the rust on the bottom. It's pretty cool, I like the look of it, it was a bit hard to remove from the struts because of the rust probably and the aging process. The struts go directly into the body and they have thumb wheels that rotate on them. The tailpiece is aluminum lightweight, I've seen it in the 58 and the 59 reissue, it's pretty lightweight, we're gonna weigh it in a second. In fact, let's weigh these right now, starting with the bridge, it is exactly 55 grams. My guess for the tailpiece is 32 grams, which is exactly the same as the 58 and 59 ratio. For the body we have carved maple top, solid single piece mahogany for the back, non-weight relief, cream binding, single ply, no dark back for this one, so we can see the line between the mahogany back and the maple top here under the binding. That's the idea of the binding to hide that line that connects the maple top to the mahogany back. One piece mahogany neck, long neck tenon, hide glue, cream binding with fret edge binding, beautiful turtle shell side dots. I think these are my favorite color for side dots. For the 2013 and 14 historic specs, one piece rosewood fingerboard, nice and oiled, cellulose trapezoid inlays and these are done pretty well i like the pattern i like the way they react to light they're pretty consistent they almost look aged like greenish but they haven't been aged the frets are okay but this guitar has been used has been played and loved has some signs of wear it's a nine year old guitar so maybe some fret leveling eventually the nut is nylon and it's done pretty well it's flush with the binding and the headstock the headstock is at a 70 degree angle with the neck, 
We have a nitro finish for the headstock, same as the body, everything on the Gibson is nitrocellulose lacquered finished. What else is here? Uh, black holy headstock veneer, the Les Paul model silk screen in gold and the pearl Gibson logo with the dotted eye. The clues on the looks tuners to go with the headstock. A historic truss rod assembly, no tubing, one way with a nut and the cover for it we have the Gibson bell, tube ply, white on the back, black gloss on the front, two screws, nothing written on it. The standard USA production has standard written on it, the custom shop doesn't. The nut is 43.3mm wide or 1.70 inch. The 12 fret is at 52.4mm or 2.06 inches. Thickness at the first fret 22.8mm or 0.89 inch. Thickness at the 12 fret 24.7mm or 0.97, thick boy. A full thickness body as expected for a standard at 50.5mm or 1.98 inch. 12 inch radius or 305mm, the scale length is 24.75 inches. A massive, chunky, early 50s rounded neck profile. My nemesis. Back of the guitar reveals the single solid piece of mahogany. Has some lovely wood grain and patterns to it. Nitrocellulose lacquer. Here's what the cavity for the three-way switch looks like. It is covered by either the Gibson Custom medallion or you can use the plastic cover included in the box. I see some of the paint on it. Four 500k pots, Bumblebee reissue capacitors, gavit conductor wire for the pickups and we can see R7 written down there. As in 57 ratio, the routing for the output jack looks like this. A brown plastic cover for the electronics compartment, no shooting of course. And here's what the output jack plate looks like, it's plastic, rectangular. These are not the original strap buttons, I think they're Dunlop replacement. Here's a better look at where the body and neck binding meet. The neck joint, the massive chunky 50 style neck, nitrocellulose lacquer, single piece mahogany, no scarf joints here, no separate pieces for the neck here, all one piece except for the wings here, they are glued separately, so Gibson doesn't waste too much wood. Periodically correct for 57 clues on the looks tuners, these had been aged, you see the screws for them are rusted and the nickel has been brushed, pretty nice looking overall. The serial number 74555, no R in front of the 7. I'm gonna use a set of 1046 Diadarios in E standard for this one. The usual case for the Gibson Custom Shop, they've used it throughout 2011 to 2022. It's the same case as on my 2019 Gibson Les Paul Custom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 golden latches. This one locks, leather handle, purplish pink lining on the inside, same as on mine. In the case we have a couple of things starting with some silica gel, some information about the historic collection including the serial number back here. This funky label Bumblebee equipped which indicates that you have the Bumblebee capacitors in the back, the Gibson custom label, vintage reissue strings Gibson branded as well. This is the key for the case, this is the optional plastic cover for the three-way switch and the two most important things starting with the Gibson Gold warranty card which also has the pre-packed checklist, final pack checklist and usually there's a date, this one doesn't have it but we have the model and the serial number. The model is LPR7VOS. Then there's the COA in the brown folder. It's supposed to match the serial number and indeed it does Les Paul R7 74555. That's a cool serial number. The signature for Rick Gamber, the senior vice president of the custom shop. Ah, this has the typical Gibson K smell. I love it. Surprisingly, the standard gold top is not that heavy at 3882 grams or 8.55 pounds. Now let's hear it.
thoughts about the 1957 reissue of the gold top. Well, it's definitely not my cup of tea. I don't like gold top finishes, I don't like light backs, I don't like rosewood fingerboards. The neck is too chunky for me. The Aonico tree pickups are not my sound at all, but I can definitely appreciate this. It's a masterpiece that came out of the Gibson custom shop and it's supposed to represent the 1957 gold top perfectly, especially with those custom buckers. It's not only a good guitar, it's a masterpiece for someone who can appreciate and properly play it. I've already said this, I'm not the guy for these sorts of guitars, but I still want to document them for you. Eventually, with age, I will probably learn to appreciate them better. Let's hope I have the chance to document a real 57 for you. Well, one can always dream, right?